you know, I met with all the Adidas people. Everyone was just super nice. And, you know, they can't, one of the gentlemen came into the room and he was like, yo, we want to take you to Calabasas to meet, to meet Ye. I was oh. like, oh, word. I was like, damn, I didn't think that shit was going to happen. Calabasas. <laughs> like, all right. So they take me, you know, they take me <laughs> over there and like, they take me to his spot that he had. And I'm sitting in this room, like waiting and I can hear like, he had a studio in there and he was like working on some music or something. Cause I could just hear like music, like pounding wow. through the walls mm -hmm. and just kind of sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. And then he finally like comes into the, the room and I, I'll never forget like that, like that first image of like him, you know, walking into the space. I just envision like light being behind him. He walks in, <laughs> all you see is like a silhouette. Yeah, it was not, nah, it was dope. It was like, yeah. I felt like I just like walked into like another, was on another planet or something like that. But he came in, we had this meeting and, you know, he sat across from me for 45 minutes, just like, you know, very like, very a a attentive and like, you know, interested in what I had to say. And we were talking and I had my portfolio in uh, uh in my iPad and put it in front of him and he's like flipping through. And then, you know, I knew like, you know, we were both creative. So like, we're talking about like what we're creating and, and what's, and, and, and projects that I worked on. And, um, and we were just vibing over mm -hmm. that. And it was like 45 minutes of just like uninterrupted time. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't looking at his phone and like waiting for when the meeting was going to be over or mm -hmm. anything like that. That's it was dope. just like, it was just a dope conversation. So that, that was my first time meeting him and my first interaction with him and then in the end he was like yo like let's let's go so you did the um, 380s we worked on all that yeah. stuff question the yeezy slides remember the first ones were yeah. orange yep was it was the inspiration from the prison shoes because that was the that was the trend that was the th the rumor <laughs> going on circulating online that the prison shoes look like this and yeezy came up with the prison shoe look alike <laughs> to the Ball Alert Show podcast available everywhere you get your podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube page at Ball Alert. I go by the name of Ferrari Simmons. Hey, young world. I'm your bestie, Sue Solo. You know BT. OCT, what that? Special guest in the building. It's Mr. Omar Bailey. Mr. Omar. I was going to say, you know what I'm saying? That. Like, put, put some respect on it. Put some, put some respect, respect on his <laughs> name, Lord Jesus. You know, Rory think they friends now because we just found out on camera <laughs> that you guys are from the same place. Automatically. Yep, shout out to the 561. Five, Tell six, us eight. about this place you guys come from. Because y'all was just so into it before the camera Beach, started Florida. rolling. Man, West Palm Beach. Known as the county that messed up the election. Uh, what was it? Uh, I remember which, that. Which election was that? That was uh, uh, that was the Bush election. The right? Bush election. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, the, we were the county that messed up that election years ago. Very oh, small, man. very small county. Isn't Trump close to West Palm? He lives in West <laughs> Palm. Mar-a-Lago, man. It's right yeah. across the water. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The islands, like yeah, our yeah. South Beach. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. City, and then you go across the bridge to the beach park. Right, right, right. Uh, and I'm guessing more allowed. the logways like- We're not allowed. We're not allowed. Well, I mean, they don't say that. Black folk but, ain't allowed. You know, yeah, mm. yeah. So if you go over there, they say, I know you don't play My golf. My fifth grade field trip was at the jail <laughs> there, and it's very nice. Wait, yeah, what? I wait, what? There was a jail over there. There was a jail over there, and it was very nice. Damn. Yeah. It sounds like you guys had a lot going on, but <laughs> uh, Mr. Bailey, what was it for you that led you to fashion from West Palm Beach? Oh, man. Well, there's nothing that fashionable about West Palm Beach. I was going to uh, say, it sounds like cargo shorts and thong yeah, sandals. Yeah, and like, uh, and um, uh, what's those uh, those shirts that people be wearing? Um, Tommy Bahamas. Tommy Bahama, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You took the words know. right out of mouth. That's exactly. <laughs> Tommy Bahama. Um, so the way the story goes real quick is that like, you know, I start, we, we moved from, from New, York New York to Florida and, and they knew about, my parents knew about the school. They wanted to put me in this school. Um, but you had to audition to get in the way that it works. Oh. So, so it was either that or John F. Kennedy middle school. Right. And, uh, and I was like, I don't want to go to JFK. Actually, you know, I, I remember when we moved to Florida, there was a kid who got shot over borrowing, uh, um, NBA jam on Sega Genesis from, another student and he ain't bring it back so he got shot oh my what? and i remember being like you sending then, me to that school yeah, like for what real, for real. boy so no like, way so so and then i had to go and i went there for a year and then i had to wait for the audition time and i ended up going to audition 
my mom, you know, you know, she's Jamaican and 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 you know, she's like very strict about her rules. She was like, you need to be home at this time. So I go to audition and then I left and I did part of my audition, but I didn't do the whole audition because I was looking at the clock and I was home when she told me to be home. And then we ended up getting like a incomplete or I didn't get in. She's like, what happened? And then she ended up later finding out that like I left at the time she told me to leave. She thought the interview would have been done by that time. So I had to go to Kennedy for another year oh. <laughs> as a result of that. So then the next year she was like, don't come home until you finish <laughs> your audition. She was taking her literally. OK. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, you told me to be home at three. So I'm at home at three. Make mama. And that was it. I was like, yeah. I ain't trying to, you know, I don't want to get hurt. Like, you know, so I'm trying to get home so anyway so um so so fast forward i end up getting into the school and that's where all this started and then as i mentioned drawing and sketching sneakers i was a terrible student from the perspective of my academic mm -hmm. classes i was very good in my art classes but not great with my academics most artists are yeah yeah mm -hmm. exactly and uh and my teachers you know saw that and and they supported me and then one magical day my I think it was the end of my junior year going into my senior year a school came to visit on a college recruiting visit called the College of Creative Studies uh, in Detroit Michigan shout out shout out to CCS um, and they showed their portfolio of like students who you know all the different types of work and there was a shoe in there and I remember they're doing the PowerPoint and I was like what is a shoe what is this and they told me about this program called industrial design and many students who study industrial design go off and they design in cars and shoes and other products and I was like that's what I want to you know, that's where I want to go to school. Cause before that, I didn't have a plan if I was going to go to college or not. Right. Like I'm at the end of my junior year. Everyone's talking about where they're going to school at the end of next year. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I'm thinking like, how do I become a shoe designer? Do I get a job at Foot Locker? Like that's literally what I thought. Okay. Maybe I get a job at Foot Locker selling shoes and somehow I'll meet somebody at Nike and they'll give me a job designing sneakers. That's what I, that's literally mm -hmm. what I thought mm -hmm. until this school came and then they laid this whole thing out in front of me and and sort of exposed me to this world of industrial design and I became obsessed with it. You know, I made up all the classes that I failed. I went to summer school. I did night school my senior year, made up all the classes that I need to. And long story short, I ended up getting into the school and got a little bit of a scholarship. And I moved to Detroit, Michigan, sight unseen, which is a whole other conversation in itself. <laughs> so now you're in college. Yep. What happens next? You know, I get to Detroit and and the first thing that let me know that I was in the right place was I met other like-minded individuals like myself, be specifically like some brothers that like became my brothers, you know, like live in similar experiences in their cities that they came from, you know, like, you know, my also boy, doing shoes, also doing shoes. My boy, Jason Maiden, shout out to Jay, who's like gone and done incredible things with working with the swoosh and brand Jordan. You can look him up and see all the incredible stuff that he's did that he's done over there in his resume you know my other boys jonathan Dwayne, drew you know they were all doing footwear and very interested in it so like you know we became close very quickly and i got to see like oh wow these dudes are on the same wavelength than i am but what really did it for me was you know i just mentioned jason maiden you know he was a designer i was a i went in as a freshman he was in a senior he just did an internship with Nike uh, in the Jordan brand Jordan department. He was working on the Air Jordan 17, Ooh, right? So that was, like, that was so, a good so number two, yeah, yeah. So that that shoe was dope. That, that was one that silhouette. came in that, and that came in the briefcase. You came remember in the, the briefcase? Yeah, in the silver briefcase. So think about this for a second, right? I'm um, eight, like six months earlier. I didn't even really know, or just beginning of that year, like I didn't know if I was going to college or not, right? I'm thinking I have to get a job at Foot Locker to design shoes. I get into this college in Detroit. I move to Detroit. I meet this dude, Jason, and I see Jason working on the Air Jordan 17. That's wild. Right? And like like that, yeah. that shit was like mind blowing. Thanks. Like knowing where I came from and seeing that. And I'm like, damn, I'm in the right place. I better not fuck this opportunity up. Like, I think it became something that was more tangible. Like you got to yeah. see it. You got to touch it. You know this person yeah. who's working on it. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I told him like that changed my life. That moment changed my life because I was like, like you said it's attainable mm -hmm. it's real like now i see somebody that looks like me that's that's in a place where i'm trying to get yeah. to and for the first time in my life i felt like i made a good decision like by being in detroit right michigan at this at this school so that you know that to me that's kind of how it all how it all started from the 
sketching on a piece of paper to knowing like, wow. damn, like I can, I can, if, if I do the things that I need to do, I it's can real. be exactly where he's at. So you go from being around, you know, all these people that are actually doing and inspiring you, but how do you go from that to the infamous timeless supreme New York slides because that's a part of your history that yeah. I was shocked to learn. You know, when I finished when I finished college, you know, the first thing I did was I knew I wanted to work for myself. I had an opportunity to do some incredible internships with Adidas, K Swiss and uh and, and worked with Timberland and a bunch of different different shoe companies. Um I knew immediately that the corporate route wasn't for me. That was what came out of that that experience for me was like, okay, I don't want to go corporate. I want to work for myself. That's just the way my mind is wired and, you know, to be independent um, creator. So what I did when I finished school was, you know, I started my own company working for myself. First two pl people that I worked with were professional athletes. And then that brought me uh, Gary Sheffield and Alan Houston, to be specific. Shout hey, out to hey, okay. shout out to Chef and, and Al. Al, Al and Chef, both great people who gave me an opportunity to help them like build footwear products for themselves. Um, and that brought me to China for the for the first time. Um, and I bring that up because that was where I got to see how the big machine works. It's one thing to like design a shoe and sketch it on a piece of paper. It's a whole other ball game when you're actually bringing it to life. Yeah. And the time that I the, the 15 years that I got to spend overseas, not only in China, but I lived in India for three years. You know, I spent significant Damn. time in Brazil, Argentina. South Korea, wherever shoes wow. were made, which is not here in the United States. You know, I spent significant time in these countries understanding what the process is like from A to Z and scaling a product and bringing it to market. Right. So the Supreme Project came about because, you know, they were aware that I had this background. Right. I was this br this bridge or this liaison, if you will, between uh, a brand and a factory. Right. The factories over in Asia, specifically in China, they loved me because you know, over there, they ain't looking at me as like a black man. They're looking at me as an American that can bring them mm -hmm. business. They're like, he's a genius. <laughs> that's, we what, need that's, him. that's what they're looking at me as. Like, yo, this dude is like the is the gateway for opportunity in in the United States, which that's all they wanted at mm -hmm. the time is they mm -hmm. just want business coming in because the United States was the, you know, one of the more profitable markets and still is, you know, all the other countries are catching up in different ways, but like, but, but nonetheless, that's where, that's how they looked at mm -hmm. me. Right. So, so knowing that this opportunity with Supreme came up, they needed, you know, this is the first time that they wanted to develop and create a product that that a footwear product specifically without collaborating with a brand like mm -hmm. you know it's like when have you ever seen supreme do a shoe by independent of a nike or a louis vuitton right or yeah, something it's, else it's right usually a collab. it's usually a collab yeah. so this is the first time that they wanted to create a piece of footwear without that and i was and i was the person to help facilitate that so they reached out and i was able to uh, to help create, develop, and produce at scale that product. We sold out of 10,000 pairs in 30 minutes what? online Damn. and across their four stores from uh, Tokyo, LA, New York, and London. Um, and and I helped them do that. You created the shoe? I created the shoe. What was that process like? It's, you know, developing a shoe is, uh, is it's, uh, it's, I like to use the word a heavy lift, right? Because that's where you're solving all the, all the problems to building a shoe and you know and 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 i know this is probably very new for a lot of people that are listening you know you say oh it's just a shoe it just falls out of the sky or there's a machine mm -hmm. that pumps it out or whatever it's like that's not how it works right mm -hmm. like the way it works is you know you have you have specific executions that you want to come up with in the shoe whether it's material execution a detail a design element specifically you need to identify the method of make the method of production the material that's going to use that determines what kind of mold you're going to make so all of yeah, these yeah, you speak my language yeah. over there <laughs> so all of these like technical things you need to really know and understand and it's almost its own language that you need to know how to speak to the factory in right so it's like how do i take what a client wants like Supreme, right? And then I translate that into a language through what I can communicate verbally, but what I can also communicate on engineering documents and drawings back to the factory. So the execution can be as close, if not 100%, to what the client is looking for. And that's like, that's kind of, that's the space that I operate in, right? Nope. It's like bringing it from paper to real life. And that can take anywhere from, you know, it could take a month, it could take two months, it could take three months, it could take 10 months. It really kind of all depends on the client and like what their expectations are or what their demands are. You know, Supreme was definitely like up there in terms of, 
their expectations and rightfully so right mm-hmm. like they're a world would not renowned brand um and there's a and there's a certain expectation level that's coming from their customer base when they put a product into the world mm-hmm. so i so i expected that like you know the demands and like what they want is justified right like they need to make sure that like you know there's no air bubbles coming up in the molds when every part is shot in the in the mold or like you know we need or during quality control we need to have like extra eyes on the shoe and make sure like you know there's no imperfection on it at all so these are all things that get managed you know through that through that process but where did your inspiration come from for the making of the shoe they wanted their own version of the adi light adidas slides mm-hmm. okay so they had already what they wanted you just yeah created. exactly they Perfected were like, it. yeah we yeah exactly mm-hmm. it's like you know this is this is a super popular like slide we want our own version mm-hmm. of that and that's generally how like most projects start right yeah like that's what i was gonna ask yeah. i was like do most people say because i see like a lot of shoes from different brands they all kind of like look similar like you'll <laughs> see like a popular shoe and then you be like mm-hmm. wait nike got this shoe out mm-hmm. that looks like that now yeah yeah, yeah that i mean the, you just hit the nail on the head my friend there's a there's a method <laughs> to that madness you know there's a lot of reasons for explaining it but i think part of it is you know listen at the end of the day like big brands and companies have you know, certain milestones and mm-hmm. KPIs that mm-hmm. they have to hit at the end of the day, right? And certain boxes have to get checked because yeah. they have to move certain uh, volumes. Yep. And yep. sometimes those goals and ambitions don't align with the creativity yep. that the designers want to put into it. Yeah. So sometimes it can cause a little bit of friction, if you will, but not as mu- not so much because at the end of the day, if designer wants the job, like that's like they you just gotta take do. You go, you go, you go, right. you gonna take you it. Gonna do what you gotta do. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. But, like, but that's a big reason why, like to answer your question, why you everybody see some things everybody. that look exactly. It's like yeah, and then, it's what's you know. selling. You know that the this is what the consumer is getting. So if it's working at this company, why won't it work over here? But exactly. then, how does new fit in the fold? That's that's a, also a, a, a very interesting thing, right? You need. You need bold founders and CEOs and designers um, who are willing to sort of like ignore the status quo mm. and like create mm-hmm. things that they believe that they really believe in, like right? The Jordan one, like yeah, yeah, Jordan one, or even think you know Yeezy, right? Like Yeezy. think about Virgil and mm-hmm. like even yeah. you know Jerry, Fear of God, and you're seeing mm-hmm. more, you know, and 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 more of it um, happening out there too, you know, as well. So. There's a there's a few hand, handful of like independent creators and uh, designers out there. Shout out to to um, uh, to Saya Collective, uh, Delvin oh, yeah. Carter. Oh, he's yeah, another his, one. That you collection's know. fire. Yeah, man, that dude is out there crushing. I've been following him for a while. Don't know him personally, but like I've been trying following to get him. a pair too. And he's been he's been <laughs> get a pair. This, year, this your moment. That he's putting that out there. <laughs> yes. oh, oh, we oh, trying oh, to get oh, a pair, <laughs> Ferrari. <laughs> we trying to get a pair. Actually, open up my DM. Oh God, Ferrari Simmons. Open up the DM. I want to spend money with you. There it is. I do have a question though. <laughs> yeah, because we're talking about all this stuff, right? Right, right. There is a fake sneaker network there yeah. is a un uh, unofficial yeah. mm. versions because for example remember you saw you talked about the mold having bubbles right those right. are supposed to be thrown away yep yeah but sometimes they're not Ooh, you know your stuff i, oh, yeah. know that <laughs> sure, yes. I got a sneaker room i don't got a closet I got oh a room, man i was okay? about to just break that down but you, uh, you're breaking it down so, right now and, and i know these people take these shoes and yep. sell them on the black market Ooh. You have a, there's a, 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 def, a, a defection um, a period or percentage, right? right? Like that, that like every factory is trying to keep as low as, as possible, right? Like it could be 5%, 10% or more that like, you know, one of every 10 pair of shoes you make don't pass the inspection that it needs to in order to go into like the main sort of run that's going to be sold. So then that shoe goes into a basket, you know, over here. And if, and if uh, it doesn't meet the standards of the brand, like it's, you know, they keep going in that basket. Then at the end of the day, all of a sudden, you know, out of a million pairs of shoes that were made, you got 30,000 of these like defective wow, shoes wait. that to your point, it might be like a little, it might be something that you wouldn't even care about. The, the t- average person probably we wouldn't, wouldn't notice, notice it. it yeah. right? It's like a thread is off or like this color bleeds into this part of the sole just by a little bit and mm-hmm. you would never even yeah. notice it, right? But then what happens after that is, 
the brand has two choices, right? They can either pay the factory to destroy those shoes, which costs them more oh, money, wow. or you can let the factory keep them. And at that point, they can do whatever they want. That's when somebody wow. somebody yeah, at I've work never comes had in. An answer to that. That's Thank so you. wild. And that is how a lot of those shoes Understood. end up on the I've market. So there could be the real thing coming from the factory that makes shoes for one of your favorite brands. Um, but it's just that it didn't pass QC and it ended up going into the other basket Child. that got sold in the market. Now, that doesn't mean... So it's not fake. They're not necessarily fake, well, but they're so not, not quality control. control. What is QC? Uh, quality control. Quality control. Yeah. Yeah. Quality control. Not the quality control y'all think of since right. we're in not the, not, right not the label. Yeah, These but, defective shoes end up on a VIP table at one of the clubs in Atlanta. Hold on, but then you do have factories out there that do make fake shoes, wow. right? Like, yeah. And I, I've 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 wait seen what up. and that's yeah. what I was going to yeah. say because you've been thing. to all these countries to actually you that's know whole thing. cultivate your talent. Did you see some of that? Oh yeah. Oh, I got to show y'all some pictures. Oh, but we like, ready? <laughs> bro, I got. I mean, some of this stuff is just comical. I remember one time I was visiting this this. Uh, this factory I was just walking through. And you know, every factory has like a, a showroom of like their greatest hits. It's like, oh, look, and they know you're American. You know so they like, mm. they like, let me take you into the room behind the room and show <laughs> you the stuff that we did. And then, you know, they show you sometimes it's impressive and yeah. other times you're like, what the fuck is this? You be like, hey man, this look like George. Yeah, yeah. He look like George. Bro, one time <laughs> they showed me these shoes. It was a Jordan. I swear to God, like <laughs> it was a Jordan logo, but like the arm was twisted in no. the other direction. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? One foot was bigger than the other. Like, I'm not joking. Like, it was. It and was dudes like, in the hood be wearing those. Yeah, man. Those are the yeah. ones that get sold to, like, pay less. Like, right. you know. No, right, I said they be in the hood. Right. They be in the hood. But they be in the, they be in the hair stores. Yeah. Of course, flea yeah. market. Yeah. 45th Street, Flea Market. 45th. <laughs> <laughs> Covered in, go. in the, in the, in the plastic wrap. <laughs> Oh my, my god, man! I used to get my hair cut there all the time, yeah, me too, man. Me too. Oh my god, yeah. But um, but no, but then you know, but sometimes these these products are also sold outside of the mar our, right. our market, right? It's, this, that stuff doesn't even make it here to the U.S. And you know, one of the perspectives that I really got to see and understand is like, you know, when you're here in the states, like that's one thing, that's one beast when it comes to marketing and like the way products and shoes are sold but then you know when i'm when i'm in a place like india for example right like you see it's very very different expectation and yeah. way of thinking around footwear right like these products are sold in markets where they can't sell a pair of sneakers to somebody for 250 dollars right. right in india like my you know i was designing shoes for people who like had they had they had they could buy one pair of shoes that lasted them the whole year yeah. right so it had to have a thick rubber sole it had to have certain like design cues and elements on it to give that person confidence that I'm not going to need to buy another shoe for 365 right, days, right? right? Wow. So like it changes right, right. your yeah. wow, wow. your 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 think your mentality mm -hmm. and thinking, right? It's one thing to design for the US market where, you know, we all in this room probably own way more shoes than we actually need, right? And but like we're designing for an aesthetic. We're designing to like appease like yeah. a certain group of people who can afford a certain. It's not a necessity. It's, it's not an, an, it's an accessory at that it's, point. Exactly, yeah. it's an accessory. Mm -hmm. And then when you're versus designing for a country where or a market where it is a necessity. Yeah. I have to think about it through a completely 100%. different lens, right? So, so yeah. we already know that these corporations are the people that are making the most profit off of other people's creativity. Knowing that Supreme slides went crazy, like how much money did you actually make off of your creativity with Supreme? Me? Mm -hmm. Oh, not. I mean, I probably just got paid. I, I can't remember exactly, but I'm sure I just got paid like a vendor wow. fee or like something a flat, like that. How flat does rate? that work, though, in, yeah. in your industry? How does the money work? Um, you know, it, it, there's different deal structures for, for everybody, you know, you can, you know, depending on how good you are with negotiating and business tactics, which, you know, most creatives are not. Um, but if you, but mm -hmm. if you are, you can, you know, try and negotiate into the, you know, get a, a percentage of the cost of goods sold on the product, but it, it just all depends on what you're bringing to the table and what you can do too. Right. Like, you know, at, at that time I was also very, I was young. This is like, this was 13 years ago. So, mm. you know, I was, uh, well, I'll be 40 next month. So that was, you know, I was in my late twenties. So at that time for me, it was just like, whatever I could get, you know, yes. like, like yes. kill what you eat kind of thing yeah. uh, or eat what you kill, mm. um, sort of. So like, so from from that perspective, it's just like, you know, you're just taking projects and doing what you can. And for me, it was really just about experience mm. building. So I don't want to make it sound like 
you know, like, I, you know, you're young and you got to like, you know, make, you, you know, get like, you know, get what you can. But I think there's you need there needs to be a fine line between like taking advantage of opportunities and gaining as much experience yeah. as you can. Like build a portfolio and building a portfolio yeah. versus mm -hmm. like worrying about royalties and recognition, right? Like I didn't get, I wasn't recognized for these projects that I was, and that's fine, right? Like I feel like I was paying my dues and I feel like now, you know, that, that, that is starting, that's paying off. Maybe, you know, it would have been nice if some of this would have happened like three or four years ago, but that's, that's cool. Like everything happens, you know, for a reason. So I think, you know, it's, it's, it's really all about, like I said, what you can negotiate for yourself. And that's, you know, it's like, how do you get this knowledge, having good mentors and family or people mm -hmm. who are, have experience in business to know how to have these, these conversations, but you know, you never know what you can get until you ask for it. Right. And I just didn't have the experience at the time to ask for that. Yeah. For me, it was more like, oh, this is a, an incredible brand that I can work with independently and like really kind of, you know, build my, like, like build a reputation from or continue to build my reputation from. So for me, it was, you know, I'm, to and it was, you know, it was 10,000 pairs of shoes. It wasn't like, it was millions of pairs. Baller alert! Hi, I'm Omar Bailey, co-founder of Factory Lab, and you're listening to the Baller Alert Show. Omar is actually the former head of Yeezy Adidas, innovation and you are the co-founder of Factory that Lab. That's Lab. deep. Right, right. Yeah, thank you. Yo, yo, no, what does that you. mean? So I was living in India at the time and I was actually, my contract was ending and um, I got reached out to by the, the lovely folks over at Adidas and they told me about this opportunity wow. uh, with, with Yeezy and that, um, you know, Kanye wanted to have a facility, a domestic facility, you know, to develop in the prototypes States. and his ideas in, in the States, right? Mm -hmm. So like if we go back to the conversation we had a moment ago about the heavy lift to like mm -hmm. bring shoes to life, right? Like that usually happens with oh, with a factory overseas. So you can only imagine you have the cultural barrier, the language barrier, mm -hmm. the time, you know, difference, like all those sort of blocks kind hard. of in, in between, right? So you're working hard versus if you had a facility that was, you know, stateside made it a lot easier. And he understood that, right? And he was like, well, I want something here like local Kanye. that like yes that mm -hmm. like that I can just give my input and like they can make another one and make another one until it gets right and I don't have to wait months and, months and months and oh, months yeah. because typically it's like yeah wait like month like two yeah. or three months yeah. Right? yeah like to go through a whole process like he might want to make like five changes and then a new mold needs to be made that mm -hmm. takes 30 days then he sees it again 30 days later and he might be on to the next thing right like by that point mm -hmm. in time right so he's like I need something here that that like I can speed this whole thing up, so that's why they reached out. That to must me. be really how Kanye talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I need to look like. This, and, and of course, you said yes. Sometimes, oh yeah, yeah, of course. I came out. You know, they they hit me and they said, you know, we feel they felt I had this pedigree and background to help lead this facility. You know, my background, fifteen years. I was fifteen years in the business already at that point primarily overseas. That's why a lot of people, when they say, oh, I never heard of this Omar dude. That's because I was like in India. You right. overseas I was, in the, I was in the trenches. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You were, like, you were there where it happened. I was there where it all happened. Yeah. So yeah. now I was like, That's okay, crazy. now I'm coming back and like, and you know, and, and so, you know, I got the, I got the receipts, man. Like they, you know, I got, I got a lot of them. So the Supreme <laughs> thing play, is just one. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, they, they hit me. Uh, I ended up coming out to LA and uh, interviewed for the for the role you know I met with all the Adidas people everyone was just super nice and and cool and then they were like and then I remember you know they can't one of the gentlemen came into the room and he was like yo we want to take you to Calabasas to meet to meet yay I was oh. like oh word I was like damn I didn't think that shit was gonna happen Calabasas <laughs> like all right so they take me you know <laughs> they take me over there and like they take me to his spot that he had and I'm sitting in this room like waiting and I can hear like he had a studio in there and he was like working on some music or something because I could just hear like music like pounding wow. through the walls and just kind of sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. And then he finally like comes into the the room and I, I'll never forget like that, like that first image of like him, you know, walking into the space. This was right <laughs> after uh, the Coachella that he did with DMX because mm -hmm. his oh, hair was still gotcha. like... I think his hair was red, red or, or something, or whatever. I At that point, he can't. He was wearing this one. He's wearing his gold grill, uh -huh. like all the time. And he walked in the he walked in the room. Fire! I just envision like light being behind him. He walks in, <laughs> all you see is like a silhouette. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what it. That's exactly what it felt like. Yeah. Like what? Yeah, yeah. Well, 
So I met him at one of his offices, but I get I've never been to his house. Oh, I thought you were at the house. Yeah, and okay. I was at like this office, but it was it was crazy because there was like just the way it was designed. Like on the outside, it just looked like a normal building, but then when you went inside, it was like all the corners and the walls were rounded, and there was no door handles. He probably on did that for a reason. All that stuff. It was, Feng shui. It was not. Nah, it was dope. It was like yeah. I felt like I just like walked into like another was on another planet or something like that. But he came in. We had this meeting. And, you know, he sat across from me for 45 minutes, just like, you know, very like very a- a- attentive and like, you know, interested in what I had to say. And we were talking and I had my portfolio in uh, uh, in my iPad and put it in front of him. And he's like flipping through. And then, you know, I knew like, you know, we were both creative. So like we're talking about like what we're creating and and what's and, and, and projects that I worked on. And um, and we were just vibing over mm-hmm. that. And it was like 45 minutes of just like uninterrupted time mm-hmm. you know he wasn't looking at his phone and like waiting for when the meeting was going to be over or anything mm-hmm. like that That's it was dope. just like it was just a dope conversation that, that was my first time meeting him and my first interaction with him and then in the end he was like yo like let's let's go with you them. got it like, like, so you didn't think dip. he was crazy he's not always crazy how people try to nah, man you know everyone i mean listen everyone has their you know opinions and rightfully so and you know obviously all the recent stuff and everything you know that went down as just unfor- you met him in his happy space. unfortunate and uh but like for me i've always had real positive experiences with him man mm-hmm. and that's kind of what i keep mm-hmm. you know to myself is he's always been real sweet to me and my wife and mm-hmm. you know and like anytime i've come around whether it's been sunday services or he comes into the lab or he's communicating ideas like the he's, donda concert in the atlanta Don, the donda concert that was the last time i was in the mm-hmm. a was for that and um and you know he's he's just like i've only had positive experiences you know with him so you know i like that's all i can speak to is like the way that he's mm-hmm. treated me like mm-hmm. as a human being when i've you know when i've when i've been around him and i can't really speak for all the other stuff what was the shoe that was created or did, was that- oh yeah so when i so i got the yeah i know we spent a lot of time on the interview but then yeah then after that there was 3 years after that of just like me sort of being in that mm-hmm. role of the head of the innovation lab and shout out to my team and everyone you know on the squad at that time everyone just put in so much hard work into like getting these products out into the market from foam runner to 450 to the uh Oof. to the uh the, the 380s so you did the um, 380s we worked on all that yeah. stuff so i'm not gonna sit here and take you know full credit for any of that stuff it was fully like a team effort and mm-hmm. how um, much freedom did he give you guys uh on creating the shoes oh absolute like maximum amount of freedom wow yeah. oh. but he was involved too though right yeah, oh man I was, so he listen, was there with you yeah well um at like when he needed to be okay. and oh. sometimes when and then sometimes when he just <laughs> wanted to show up but <laughs> no i've never seen a person that was so like heavily involved like like someone of that stature like mm-hmm. and I've, yeah. I've worked with a lot of people i've worked with a lot of athletes and other entertainers and stuff, but that dude is like really about it. Like he was ask you this. super he was, detailed. He was the, yeah, 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 just like really involved in the design process. Not just like the shoe itself, but down to like the color of the packaging, to the name of the shoe, the shoelace colors. Even though he didn't really like shoelaces later on, he wanted to do shoes without shoelaces. And then like <laughs> and and just everything, like just like his attention to detail. You know, you re- you understand very quickly, like from why he's such a why everyone calls him sort of this creative. He's a mad genius, scientist. Right? Yeah. Like, question yeah. is that there's a reason for that. Question: The Yeezy slides. Remember the first ones were yeah. orange. Yep. Was it was the inspiration from the prison shoes? Because that was the that was the trend. That was the th- <laughs> the rumor going on circulating online that the prison shoes look like this, and Yeezy came up with the prison shoe look alike. <laughs> Who came up uh, with yes that? Yes or no? Idea? That was uh, honestly, I can't answer that question because okay. that was before. That was before my time. Omar said that wasn't me, baby. That was yeah. not said, me. I plead the fifth. He said my name <laughs> been it and I ain't in it. I'm telling you. <laughs> what did you learn from Kanye West? Um, you know, I think the biggest thing that I learned from him and just that experience in general is that is is to is to is that impossible really is mm. nothing, right? Like. Like, you know, like Jay-Z said, impossible, what, impossible takes a day, difficult takes a week or mm. something like that. And I learned that, like, you know, you can really push your boundaries creatively. Like, I felt like that moment and that time when I was when I was there, like, I really, you know, I was like 15 years in the business. I've seen a lot. I've done a lot. 
But then like that time there really like let me know it was like okay to like push beyond what what I know. You know, it's very, very easily whatever industry you're in, you can get caught up in like the box that's kind of established in front of you, right? Oh, you do you do have to do things this way and it can't be changed and that's just what it is yeah. and don't challenge it or don't ask about it. Like he made me feel like or or realize that it was okay to challenge it and okay to think outside the box and color outside the lines. And I think that plus like the experience that I've had going into that situation and coming out, going into starting this new company is really um, allowed me to to just think freer as a as a creative and not be bounded by like the the restrictions that have may have been put on me by the big brands and mm -hmm. some of the clients that I may have worked with in the past. So now you got your new company. Yep. Your new shoe. Factory Lab. Shout out Factory Lab. Shout out to yeah, the let team. Us know about it. Yeah. You know, everybody back at yours. back at the back at the lab. So, you know, my co founder Abi and Satyan and Amaya and, you know, the rest of the squad, uh, Fahad and everybody over there. Full like, you know, team of uh we originally started out as just like a uh like all people of color, you know, yeah. in the in the company, and uh, and we just hired our first white person not that long ago. So welcome to the team. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I didn't white. see a white person when y'all was doing the with the shoe show. <laughs> yeah, a little a little inside joke. Shout out to to, to to Dylan. He knows it comes Dylan? from a good place. What up, yeah, Dylan? Yeah. What up, Dylan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, but no. So Factory Lab is a you know is a full like footwear innovation lab based here in the states in Los Angeles downtown in the Arts District. And our goal is to work with creators and brands um, and help them build their brands through footwear, right? Mm -hmm. Like you see many celebrities and creators, everyone's got a tequila brand, everyone's got right. a clothing brand, you know, everyone's got this, but the one thing that you haven't really seen, and there's been a few who've tried it, uh, but you never really seen anyone like, like build sort of a brand like out of footwear. Jessica Simpson comes to mind. She did it with high heels and crushed it and still mm -hmm. is, still is, you yeah. know, still is killing yeah. it. But you've never really seen it done, you know, in the sneaker space. And I think, you know, part of the reasons or at least one of the reasons that I can speak to is because, you know, it's just so hard, right? Like yeah. mm -hmm. the way that the, because I'm a, I'm able to do what I'm able to do is because I took this untraditional unconventional route of yeah. going directly overseas yeah. and like and learning right I didn't you know Nike or Adidas didn't pay for me to go to China like I went there on my you did own the real grind. and I knocked on doors yeah. and I developed relationships and I cultivated those relationships and and I and I and I was able to learn over that time the lay of the land and how this works oh, okay if I want to build you know a sports or performance shoe this is the part of China I go to if I want to build you know, women's high heels. I go to Brazil. If I want to build high end this, I go to Italy, I go here. And then you build these relationships in these places and then you know where to go. Right. It's that's very different than sitting behind your computer on Alibaba and mm -hmm. Googling shoe factory mm -hmm. and sending them some money. Nine times out of 10, you're going to get something back that like you didn't want. Right. It's like, here's the design and you get back something that doesn't even look anything, <laughs> you know, like it. Right. right so right, like, right. so factory lab exists to to sort of to to eliminate that part right like if you know if someone wants to create a a brand or or you know an influencer or someone who has you know who has some audience or who's kind of on the rise um who's you know looking to build you know to to continue to to amplify that 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 um uh, with footwear, like we want to come in and be able to help them, mm -hmm. That's fine. you know, do that. that. And then eventually, you know, my goal is to really be able to help those who who don't have the resources too, as well. Right. We're mm -hmm. a new company, so I need to focus on the things that are going to that allow us to generate revenue. But in the end, my goal is to really help those young creators That's who we don't have about. the money. Mm -hmm. Right. To be able to like to 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 invest into them and help them rise and grow on their own and dare I say find the next Virgil Abloh or yeah, Jerry Lorenzo yeah. you know or someone like or that you, and give them you. or yeah, the yes. or, yeah, or, or the I mean, thing I appreciate that not yeah. only are you creating a, a community out of this right but you're also being the person that you may have needed when you were coming into this world when yeah. you were trying to navigate because you didn't have that you're the no. first person in your family to break through and yeah. do something like this I mean I, I think it's amazing what you're doing we're super excited and, and proud of you most importantly thank you we want to see these shoes yeah, friend. yeah let's do it so <laughs> We're doing drop two of the Night Runner. Um, we're dropping in two new colors. Uh, the first drop Ooh. was, which sold out, uh, was a black and blue. And this time we're doing 
the the slime green as you can see right here bang there you go so these are man the response has been like fantastic about this color right here these are these yeah. are wild. I need those and then so green and then um white let me pull up the let me pull up the white before my before my co-founder gives me a hard time about not showing the white shout out to abby that's what i, that's what I got I, uh, I, this is what sue's wearing i can Mark, barely Mark. take them off my feet like i wear them yeah, wear so the much and, and these are the these are the white ones so here you go yeah look at the no white good. shoes look at the white shoes oh, good yeah sue, white sue is making me them. jealous because y'all didn't have my size when i was in utah <laughs> do you smell your shoes because i will smell mine oh god i do I, I was going to ask, how did you guys even come up with uh, your production company? Factory Lab? Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't told too many people this story, but, you know, before I I left for, um, I, I had my own brand also at one point in time. So I was in India at Omar Bailey Footwear. Okay. We were selling it. I was producing it in New York in this small shop that I, that I had, and we were selling them overseas in Dubai, uh, specifically Level Shoes in the Dubai Mall. If you ever go to Dubai, check out Level Shoes. Shout out to Levels. Places incredible. Well, he be it's hustling, like man. Yeah, like <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a department store for footwear. Super, super dope store. Probably one of the best shoe stores that you'll see. So I was selling my shoes there. And then I ended up getting picked up by Galleries Lafayette, which is like a well-known like British, uh, UK-based uh, retail department store. They have stores around Europe. And then they opened one in Doha, Qatar. And then they picked up my brand, too, okay, as well. Talk. So I had, yeah, Qatar. So shout out shout out to the folks in Doha and Ron. Qatar. Mars. All that, too. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. all over the place. Wait, so how did you come up with that design right there that you that you brought us? So, you know, so that, that concept was... Um, you know, was inspired. It, a lot of people say it looks like a boat. It was actually inspired by automotive design. Night runner. Right? So like mm. when you think about, like I went to CCS, which is a automotive design school, right? And like, and and so I've, I'm a big car fan. You know, I'm also fans of just all different types of vehicles and, you know, whether it's like, you know, you look at some of the really cool sort of futuristic cars. And now even now when you think about when we were growing up, right? Like remember when you would, they would say, oh, this is what the flying cars and yeah. this when we were like 10 and 12. Yeah, and those, were, those were they you used would to see look it, like. Right? And shows like, you know, and, and TV shows that like had cars in them and the stuff Jetsons. like that. So like, yeah, the Jetsons and, you know, some some other stuff. And um, and and that's what this was inspired by. It was inspired by automotive design elements right and, and these like are called what name of shoes the night runner the night, night, runner. Runner. The night, night runner. runner night runner night runner so like Maybe. so you know so this represents like one you know one element of of to me of like what we're going to be putting out into the market so you know factory lab where i like to say we're sort of brand agnostic right we're like more like the engine or the powered mm -hmm. by right so like so what that means is like you know, we have the, we, you know, you see a brand and usually brands have to be very consistent with how they design product and put it out right. and, you know, certain sort of brand elements that you need to follow so mm -hmm. that there's a consistency in the market and your customers aren't confused by when you do something different, right? But for us, like, because we are the engine and we are the powered by, that gives us a license to really sort of create and do things completely, you know, outside the box, which brings me to one of our products that we're going to be launching next. Uh oh, what's that? Uh oh, it's an exclusive. I'm going to show, I'm gonna show yeah, you guys exclusive. the first time you're seeing this here. But this it's a boot. It's called the Stomper. Um, and this is. Yes. Oh, 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 this is oh. The, pass it around. This is, yeah, this is the Stomper. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those are for life. This is a sneaker question. Okay. Usually the prototype shoe size is a nine. Correct. Sample so what's size. your prototype? Are you a hater? Bro? What's your sample size? Oh man, it's my size. <laughs> Eleven. Okay, okay. Oh, but okay. those are not elevens. Right, right, right. Those right. are those are actually. Look, I'll say, man, you so got the same size. <laughs> the prototypes will always be your size. Eleven. Yeah, they'll always be my size. Got it. Uh, but yeah, no. So these are the those these are, are cool. these are the stompers. We had um, baby. You know, I got I got to shout out my man Simba who came through the lab I like that strip uh, last on the back. week. Yeah, little saw Velcro. The, saw the shoe. Thank you. And uh, was. His reaction was exactly like yours too, as well. So you know we're working Sheet. on it. It just looks so futuristic. Now, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I put those on, am I gonna gain an inch? 
Oh yeah, <laughs> man, you gonna get, get, get about get, three inches? Yeah, exactly. You about to get a few inches I off need that? It. You about to get a few inches Six off these? Six Ferrari on the way. <laughs> <laughs> <You're so stupid. laughs> I got a question. What, what is up with the big oversized shoes now? I think it's just the trend and kind of the space that we're living in right now, right? And you know, for me, like it's it's more about like the, you know, when you have a lot of volume that you're playing with. In terms of like design, I feel like you can be really creative mm -hmm. and expressive. Mm -hmm. So like the Night Runner is a great example of it, right? A lot of people say, oh, these look really like big and this, and you have all these like weird shapes. But because you have this like sort of weird funky shape, it allows you to really like play with like the execution of the toe shape. And then even when you look at like some of these angles and the way that they stick out, you know, on the sides. Um, so for me, like, that's that's why I like sort of sort of big and clunky because you know I get the shape that volume almost imagine it like a piece of clay right and you get to play with that same thing here too there's some elements of that in the stomper the way we played with the sole and the way we added this like this sort of duck boot type of toe you know on the on the front and and maintain some of that same um, sort of creative. Uh, approach. Can we get to a beef it. and broccoli version of that? That's a cool. I already started. I already started on that. So Ooh. we got. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna drop these in the in the fall. Uh, the date will be released very soon. You got to follow you, Factory yeah. Lab to I just find follow out. Both of y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm about, I'm about to follow right hey. now. But you we are, could be besties. You had y'all could be best friends uh, from from West Palm Beach. I know, right? <laughs> you had Make a few color friend. waves at the Hennessy Arena. Yeah, there was a brown color, but yeah. the other one is we did a gray um, mm -hmm. as well that with with little like light purple accents to it. So this little they ball is like a yeah. very light purple color. It was like this, one. and then and then so the other different. color I'm super okay. excited about is all burgundy, like a dark oh, dark Lord. burgundy with like with two with a little like bright red hints on it. So um, yeah, we're gonna be sharing this stuff out hopefully real soon, and uh, yeah, and and stay out stay on the lookout for that drop date on the stomper. But but the point is is like. We went from this yeah, to this, yeah. right? And it's like, just imagine what we're going to do next. Time out, time out. Could we talk about the shoe box? Because I'm a sneakerhead. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bring the sure. box up. It's not your normal square shoe box. No, it's not. Almost it's common. a one, two, yeah, three, right? four, yeah. five, six, it was a hexagon. Yeah, everyone says the casket shape. Shout out to mm -hmm. um <laughs> to King Saladin who was like, and yo, it I pull thought, out. It pulls up. It pulls up. He pulls up. He was like, yo, is this? He's like, is this a coffin? Because y'all killing it? Ah. I was like, oh, damn. We gonna say that I now. Like that. I like that. I, like I didn't that. even <laughs> think about it like that. So shout out to Saladin for that one. Uh, now you gotta then, get casket sharp. Yeah, you can see sort of the way that it inlays <laughs> like the shoes in, the, sit in there in the box, yeah, and this was all you I know. This was all by though. design, right? <laughs> so like, you know, for me, the packaging. You know, when I was in, I learned very early on in college that like, you know, we would have to do these design presentations. And yep, from the briefcase, <laughs> you have to do these presentations mm -hmm. where you put everything out on the wall. And, you know, you spend hours and hours and hours, sometimes days and weeks on these projects. And then you have to present it to your classmates. You don't want to just throw it up on the wall. So you got to design the whole presentation. So I learned that from very early on. Mm -hmm. If you're going to create a product, it needs to be presented appropriately. Yeah. And that's what this represents is it's a very disruptive way that packaging can be yeah. presented. And this is going to be a theme that we're going to continue on. The packaging for this is crazy. I'm, I'm oh, excited. Man. Oh, wait, wait, next winter. Wait to wait to wait you to you, wait till you, you see that. Come bring them here. Oh, yes, yeah. for sure. Yes. Oh, please, please. For sure. For the sure. whole Friday, team Hennessy was so mad. Else coming up? <laughs> Um, man, you know, just, you know, we, like I mentioned, we got our launch, uh, tomorrow, April 12th, um, the, uh, the, the, the drop two of the, uh, of the night runner in green and white. Uh, we are planning on restocking the white and the, and the black, um, later this summer. Um, and, uh, stay tuned for that date as well. Ooh. We got a really cool, uh, story and potential partner. Uh -oh. um, with that one too as well um you know we, we do a lot of things man we're working on you know we do sports shoes you know we just developed a football cleat for jalen ramsey you know jalen shout, that's out, the to one jalen. shout out to jalen he's, that's my he's guy he's in florida now yeah yeah he's in miami, miami dolphins yep yep, miami yep. Dolphins. so we're, we're getting those new colorways ready for him right now so sh shout out to jay and you know the whole crew man that dude's good people 
And, um, you know, we're doing that. We got a couple other guys we're working with. I can't name them right Uh-oh. now at the moment. That's but, all like, right. We follow. got some really follow right. follow Factory Lab and you will find out I'll when the time is too. appropriate. Cool. Appreciate yeah. that. Appreciate that. Follow us and you'll see. But, you know, we're, you know, listen, we're, you know, like, uh, you know, I said this once before and I'll say it again. You know, I want to, you know, my goal is just to like make cool shit with cool people yeah. um, and right. and work with good people and put out great product into the world. And I feel like, you know, this moment in time is uh, I feel like this is this is my moment, our moment as it Factory is. Lab, you know, to do that. If, you know, a year ago I was still at uh, actually I left Adidas exactly one year ago. Tomorrow is when I left the company. And On since then date. I was able to go and raise you know six million dollars in in seed funding as one of the the largest uh seed rounds for a black uh founder last year in 2022 in a down market when it was very difficult to raise money we were oversubscribed and we have some incredible incredible investors you know on board shout out to all of them who've believed in us and and who've gotten gotten behind behind us was that are you still cool with Adidas? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are my people, man. Yeah, I work there. I mean, you know, like I, like I, like you know, I, I love that brand and that in that company. I still wear, you know, Adidas and stuff, and you know, and it was my first internship that I ever did in 2005 was with was with Adidas. You know, so you know, by no means what you know, Factory Lab is. Am I like ignorant enough to say, oh, we're gonna be the next, you know, Adidas and Nike and all that? Like, I'm not. I've been in this game long enough to know that is just not possible. I'm just trying to operate in this little small space that the, that that companies that are too big to operate in, like even care about. Right. And that's like working with, you know, working with creators and like putting product into the market. It doesn't have for me. It's not about making millions and millions upon millions of units and selling into all these mm-hmm. markets. It's more about like smoke it focused on smaller volumes and quantities and like and sort of taking that slow growth approach right like you know back in the day if you wanted to start a shoe company you know get into the shoe business what you did was you would buy you know you'd find a factory order 20,000 pairs of shoes and find a retail partner like Foot Locker and like pray that Hope you could sell, sell like mm-hmm. you know 60 or 70 percent of your inventory and mm-hmm. then offload the rest of it at tj maxx or something like that right now because of social media and how and how much smaller the world is because as a result of social media you know there are new strategies and steps that you can take to to get to a mass audience and sell your products and that's where i'm that's the niche in the space that I'm focused on. The big brands are always going to have their space and do what they're doing. And by no means am I like, you know, pronouncing that we're going to take down a big company. No way, no way, no how. Like those guys are killing it. And, but they are kind of missing Yeezy though. What's that? They are kind of missing Oh yeah, Yeezy. and that's an opportunity for us. And that's an opportunity for others too. You know, like I mentioned some of those brands that are, you know, out there, the, you know, the Sia Collectives and, and, and some of the others you know, that are in the that are in the footwear space. And hopefully this inspires more like independent, you know, footwear brands to to start like, you know, there's enough pie for everybody Absolutely. out there to, to eat. Mm-hmm. Right. I think it's now it's just about breaking that psychology that like it's not just the big brands that can do it, but it's, you know, the night runner to me represents us like breaking that trend. Right. Like we didn't think there was going to be such a positive response to this product so early on. We thought we were going to need to have to sort of go through the motions of like building, mm-hmm. you know, a way a brand is built. And and it just so happened that, you know, Hypebeast, shout out to Hypebeast, they did a, you know, really incredible piece on this product going to market and the way we developed it in one and a half months. And it got a lot of really positive feedback it and reaction viral. and it went viral mm-hmm. real quick. Million views in less than a day on this video. Mm-hmm. And and it, that told us something that told us that there is an appetite. There's a hunger in the market. There's a gap. Yeah. And that y'all know what y'all doing in the place. Thank you very much. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Well, you know, we've been around the block a few times. <laughs> And um, and it just shows that there's an appetite out there for something that's new. So, like I said, hopefully what we're doing inspires inspires others yeah. to want to do the same. You know, there's plenty of space out there for all of us to swim and and flourish. And um, yeah, that's that's what I'm about in yeah. Factory Live. Well, well Mr. Omar Man. Bailey, we are so proud of you. Yes, We're sir. so proud what you add to the culture. Thank you for bringing us the shoes. We can't wait My to see. My new friend. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Honestly, yes. Beach Connection. Right. 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 Go follow Factory Lab. So before do. we get out of here, Mr. Omar Bailey, we got a pep talk. 
My name is Omar Bailey. I am the co-founder of Factory Lab. And, you know, my advice to anyone who is trying to build or create something and, and let their voices be heard is to, you know, focus less on recognition and more on the experience. And what I mean by that is, you know, put the horse blinders on, like lock in on your passion and what it is that you are really just interested in and love. And through that passion is what's going to get you. That's going to be the through line for the rest of your career, right? Like when you focus on that, that's what's going to get you through the, the bad times. It's even going to get you through the good times. But the passion is the one consistent thing that's always going to be there. So stay passionate and committed to your craft. And I guarantee that you will have success. Follow